Hello everyone, my name is John McCann and I am the Tabletop Tutor. Today I will be teaching you how to play Pandemic, designed by Matt Leacock, released in 2008 by Z-Man Games. Pandemic was republished as a new edition in 2013. I have included images from both editions of the game in this video so you can see how it has changed slightly in the reprinting. The 2013 reprint includes two additional roles, the Contingency Planner and the Quarantine Specialist, which were not included in the original game. Other than that, all the rules are the same between the two editions. The Pandemic Core Box is a game for two to four players, ages 10 and up, and can be played in 45 minutes. There have been three additional expansions on the Brink, released in 2009, In the Lab, released in 2013, and State of Emergency, released in 2015. With each expansion, there have been additional roles, events, and challenges added to the base game. I will provide links to the respective pages on BoardGameGeek website in the description below this video. You can use the chart here to fast forward to the places in the video that you specifically want to listen to. In my videos, I cover the end game first, so you can keep this in mind as I explain how to play. Players work together as a team against the game. The players win if they find a cure for all four diseases, blue, yellow, black, and red. It is not necessary to eradicate the four diseases to win the game. The players all lose immediately if any of the following occur. First, if a player needs to draw a card but there are not enough cards in the player draw pile, then you have run out of time. Second, if a player needs to add a disease cube to the board but there are no cubes of that color available in the supply. Third, if the outbreak marker is moved to the eighth and final spot of the outbreak track. I will cover how these mechanics work in the detailed rules later. Now that you know how the game ends, let's take a look at game setup. First, place the board in the center of the table within easy reach of all players. Next, shuffle the roll cards and randomly deal one to each player. Players take their corresponding color-coded player token and a player reference card, return any unused roll cards, player tokens, and reference cards to the game box. Next, place one research station in Atlanta here. Then, place the remaining research stations on the side of the game board. Next, put the outbreak marker on the the zero space of the outbreak track here, place the infection rate marker on the leftmost two space here, and place the four cure tokens with the vial side face up at the bottom of the game board near the cure's discovered area here. Next, separate the disease cubes by color and place them near the board in four separate piles. These petri dish storage containers are included in the On the Brink expansion and have a nice thematic presence on the game board. Next, set aside the six epidemic cards which have the same back as the player cards. Then, shuffle the remaining player cards which include the 48 city cards and five event cards. Deal cards to each player face down. In a two-player game, each player gets four cards. In the three-player game, each player gets three cards. And in a four-player game, each player gets two cards. Next, decide how challenging of a game you would like to play. The difficulty level of this game is determined by the number of epidemic cards which are evenly distributed in the player draw pile. For the introductory game, divide the player cards into four equal piles. For the normal game, divide the player cards into five equal piles. For the heroic game, divide the player cards into six equal piles. Next, shuffle one epidemic card into each of the evenly distributed piles and stack the piles up to form a single player draw pile which you place here. Return any extra epidemic cards to the game box. Shuffle the infection cards with the green back and place them face down in the infection cards draw pile here. Seed the board with the initial disease cubes as follows. Draw the first three cards from the infection card draw pile and place them face up in the discard pile here. For each card drawn, place three cubes of the corresponding color onto that city. Do the same for the next three cards, placing two cubes of the corresponding color onto those cities. Do the same for the next three cards, placing one cube of the corresponding color onto each of these cities cities. Now that the game is set up, let us learn how to play. The player who was most recently sick goes first. Starting with the first player, play will proceed clockwise around the table with each player taking turns in order until the game ends. Each turn, the current player does the following. First, take four actions. Second, draw two cards from the player draw pile to add to their hand. Third, 
take on the role of the infector, let's dig deeper into these three phases of the player turn in the detailed rules section. First, let's look at the actions that are available to the players. There is a brief explanation of each of these on the player reference card. The basic actions available to a player are drive or ferry, direct flight, charter flight, shuttle flight, and pass. The drive or ferry action allows a player to move their pawn along one line from one city to an adjacent city. Note that on the left and right sides of the board there are three lines connecting San Francisco to Tokyo, San Francisco to Manila, and Los Angeles to Sydney. To take a direct flight to a specific city, play a card from your hand to the discard pile and move your pawn to the city pictured on the card. To charter a flight to anywhere on the board, play a card from your hand to the discard pile matching the city where your pawn is currently located to move your pawn to any city on the board. To take a shuttle flight, start in a city with a research station. Cities with research stations are considered adjacent. You can spend one action to move from one research station to the next. A player may also elect to pass and do nothing for an action. This is useful if you are setting yourself up for another action, for example, share knowledge, and if there is nothing remaining within reach for you to complete in this round. The special actions available to a player are build a research station, discover a cure, treat disease, share knowledge. Research stations are useful because they allow shuttle flights to quickly move around the board and they are also required to, for the Discover a Cure special action. To build a research station, discard the player card corresponding to the player's current city, then place a research station in that city. There are only a limited number of research stations in the game, so if there are no more research stations available in the supply, select one of the stations already in play and transfer it to the city your pawn occupies. Your goal in this game is to discover the four cures to the four diseases. As soon as you have done this action four times, Times, the game is over and the players win. If your pawn is in a city with a research station, discard five player cards of the same color to cure the corresponding disease. Take the corresponding color coded cure marker and place it vial side up here. In order to hold back the loss conditions which occur when either the disease cubes cannot be placed on the board or when the eighth outbreak occurs, players have to treat the disease in order to keep the number of disease cubes of each color on the board in check. Use the treat disease action to remove one cube from the city your pawn occupies. If the cure is known for the disease, then the treat disease action will remove all cubes of that color from the city your pawn occupies. If the cure is known for a disease and you have treated all the disease of that color on the board, then the disease has been eradicated from the game. Turn over the cure vial to show the sunset side. Then you can return all cubes of the eradicated disease to the game box as they will no longer be needed in this game. From now on, infection cards of this color will have no effect during the playing the infector phase. An eradicated disease is great because it lessens the impact of the infection phase. However, it is not necessary to eradicate a disease in order to win the game. The share knowledge action is the only phase for players to move cards from one player's hand to another. When two players are in the same city, you can transfer the card of that city from one player to another for one action. You can only trade the card for the city both of you are in. If at the end of the share knowledge step, a player has more cards than maximum hand size of seven cards, they must immediately discard a card to return their hand size to seven cards. Each player will be taking on the role of a different specialist from the CDC team that is investigating the cures for the four diseases. Your role will give you a a unique ability that no one else will have in the game. The dispatcher as an action with the other player's permission, the dispatcher may move other players' pawns on his turn using any of the available basic actions as if they were his own pawn. For the charter flight movement type, the dispatcher would have to discard a card matching the city where the pawn he is attempting to move is located. The dispatcher may also spend an action, but without spending a card, to move a pawn to any city that contains another pawn. For example, if the white and green player wanted to share knowledge, the dispatcher could facilitate getting them to the same location. The operations expert. As an action, the operations expert may add a research station to his current location without having to play the card matching his current city. The scientist. Discovering a cure normally requires discarding five cards. For the scientist, only four cards are required when performing the discover a cure action. The medic. 
Normally, when a player performs the treat disease action, they remove a single cube from a city. The medic may remove all cubes of a single color when performing the treat disease action. In addition, if the cure is known, then when a medic enters a city, they perform the treat disease automatically as a free action and remove all the cubes of that color from the city. The researcher. Normally, the share knowledge action can only be performed in the city matching the card which is being exchanged. The researcher has the same restriction when receiving a card from another player. However, what makes the researcher truly powerful is they can give any player any card as an action as long as the two players are in the same city. This works anytime the researcher is the giver in a share knowledge action. To put this another way, on another player's turn, another player can take a card with with the researcher's consent, of course, as long as they are both in the same space. In the 2013 edition of Pandemic, two new roles were introduced to the core box, the contingency planner and the quarantine specialist. I'll talk about these in a few minutes as their relevant game rules have not yet been explained. Once the player has performed four actions, the next phase of the player turn is to draw two cards from the player draw pile to add to their hand. We will cover what happens if the revealed card is an epidemic card in a few minutes. In the base game, there are five special event cards. These cards may be played at any time on any player's turn and do not require an action to play. When you play a special event card, immediately follow the instructions on the card, then discard it to the player discard pile. These event cards can be game changers if strategic played at just the right moment. This is where the new role, Contingency Planner, comes into play. The Contingency Planner may, as an action, retrieve an event card from anywhere in the player discard pile and place it on their roll card. Only one event card can be on their roll card at one time, and it does not count against their hand limit. When the Contingency Planner plays the event card on their roll card, it is removed from the game instead of discarding it. Players have a hand limit of seven cards. If the number of cards in a player's hand ever exceeds seven as a result of drawing cards or sharing knowledge, the player must immediately discard cards to the player discard pile to reduce their hand to seven. Players may openly discuss strategies during the game, but when playing normal or heroic games, players may not show the contents of their hands, though players may freely tell other players what they have. Since Pandemic is a test of cooperation and not memory, players may freely examine the contents of the player discard pile and the infection discard pile at any time. This may be useful, for example, when trying to remember if a certain city could outbreak during an upcoming playing the infection phase. For example, if you're trying to decide to go to perform the treat disease action in Baghdad or Shanghai, checking to see if one or the other is already in the discard pile could stave off an outbreak lurking around the next corner. Now, let's delve into the really dastardly part of Pandemic, the epidemic card. When a player draws the epidemic card, take the following three steps, otherwise known as the three I's. Increase, infect and intensify. First, increase the infection rate indicator by moving the token one space to the right along this track. Second, infect a new city which, as of yet, has not been infected during this game. Take the bottom card from the infection draw pile and add three cubes to the city pictured on the card. Then place the card into the infection discard pile. No city can contain more than three cubes of any one color. If the epidemic would cause the city to exceed that limit, then an outbreak is triggered. I'll explain what that means in a moment. Also, if there are not enough cubes of a color to add to the board during an epidemic, then the players lose immediately. Third, intensify the game by taking the infection discard pile, give it a shuffle, then place it on top of the remaining infection draw pile. What this does is ensure that the cities that most recently have been infected will continue to get infected. Plus, it guarantees that at least one of the cards in the top of the deck is an immediate threat of having an outbreak. We'll talk about those in a minute. Once the drawing cards phase is complete, then the player takes the role of the infector. Check the current infection rate and draw that many cards from the top of the infection deck. Resolve cards in the order you draw them. Add one cube to the pictured city using a cube of the same color as displayed on the top left-hand corner of the card. If the card color is one which has been eradicated, then you can ignore the card. If the city already has three cubes in it of the color being added, then instead of adding the cube, an outbreak occurs in that color. For example, during the playing the infector phase, 
Hong Kong is drawn, but there are already three red cubes in Hong Kong. Instead of adding the fourth cube, an outbreak occurs. First, advance the outbreak track here one step. Then, add one cube of the corresponding color, in this case red, for Hong Kong, to each city that is connected to Hong Kong by a line. As you can see in doing this, a red cube may be placed in a city of another color, as occurs here in Kolkata, which would normally get black cubes. If any of these cubes would be added to a city that bring that city a fourth cube, then a chain reaction occurs, resulting in a second outbreak. Note that each city can only outbreak once in each chain reaction, but if you are not actively managing the cubes on the cities by using the treat disease action, it is possible to have a chain reactions of three or more cities in a row. The other new role in the 2013 edition of Pandemic is the Quarantine Specialist. The Quarantine Specialist prevents both outbreaks and the placement of disease cubes in the city she is in and all the cities connected to that city. So in the example above, if the Quarantine Specialist had been standing in Hong Kong or one of its connected cities, then the chain of outbreaks described in that example would never have occurred. The quarantine specialist does not affect cubes placed during setup, meaning that since the players start in Atlanta, the quarantine specialist is not going to prevent cubes from being placed in Atlanta or its three connected cities. After the infection cards are resolved, place them onto the infection discard pile. Your turn is over. The player to the left now takes their turn. Play continues until the game ends. The players win if they discover a cure for all four diseases. The players lose if the outbreak tracker reaches the final space or there are no disease cubes of a specific color available when you need to add one to the board or there are no player cards available when you need to draw one. And now you know how to play Pandemic. Thank you for watching this tabletop tutorial for Pandemic by Z-Man Games. My name is John McCann and I am the Tabletop Tutor. If you enjoyed this video and would like to follow along as I share games that I enjoy, please find that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my upcoming episodes. That's all for now and I look forward to seeing you at the gaming table.